Well, hello, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy, Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. We're already open for business, and football gods, well, they've turned their back on the team. They just turned their back on the team. And this is one but ugly Monday, congratulations to the Washington football team and Eagles. As Michael Anthony says, Philly, enjoy the belt. Enjoy the belt because it's a foregone conclusion that this team is heartless and gutless. You know, it took a long time before Jason Garrett was let go. And now in hindsight, you look back and say, well, maybe this all wasn't Jason Garrett's fault. We'll see what happens over the next few years with the New York Giants to see if he's able to turn them around. And this year has been a bad year because of COVID and, you know, things. Philly 500 actually said something that, that may be more correct than anything else. The fact that his team did not change coaching staffs at least gave them an advantage because the players that were there basically know what the philosophy is. When you look at the Giants, the Washington football team, and the Cowboys, they all have new staffs, and you're dealing with a shortened offseason, no preseason games. You're just showing up, and everybody's getting injured. The thing that is interesting to me is Jerry Jones had kind of put out their edict that, you know, we're trying to get to the Super Bowl. There's a sense of urgency. You know, I don't have as many years in front of me as I do behind me. And he wants to hold that trophy up. And as we look at the team right now, let, let's be honest here, 100% honest. This team is about as far away from a Super Bowl as you can be. We went from thinking that, you know, we had a window of opportunity with the players that we had to now looking at this is a rebuild time. And I almost think as we've been going through the, the problems that we've had this season, we've had a lot of problems this season. We've had, you know, players that don't buy into the system, you know, that have questioned what's going on. We've had players that just don't seem like they should be out on the field and a lack of actually playmakers. And throughout this whole time, we've kind of had – Jerry and Mike McCarthy saying, you know, we want to promote from within. You know, we believe in our players. We, we famously had Mike McCarthy not want the blue and white scrimmage to be broadcast. And they ended up not putting numbers on guys because we're worried about other teams poaching our players. You know, we had this double secret probation that you thought, oh, my God, you know, we got the CIA here that they're going to come up with some stuff that's going to be, you know, earth shattering that that you know, stuff we've never seen before. He's trying to make sure we got an advantage. But even through discontent for several weeks, the locker room split, I don't think happened last week. I think that's been going on for a while when we've heard guys, you know, say that the system is too hard, it's too complex. You know, that maybe we need to simplify things. And we've had guys that have been questioning all season long. But Jerry Jones, much like last year, kept saying, you know, we have an opportunity. And, and I'm waiting because I, I figured something would be done by the Dallas Cowboys. Some kind of move. Somebody would be held responsible. Somebody would be the scapegoat. But I'm also waiting for Jerry Jones to say something like, now's not the time to panic because we're playing for first place this weekend. I'm waiting to actually hear that because this is how crazy this situation is. Last week, as you've got anonymous players that are saying that the coaching staff is trash, that they seem unprepared and don't know how to teach, Jerry Jones was talking about, well, with the unique situation of our division, we're in first place, and now's not the time to do anything. When is the time, then? We're not in first place right now. We are literally in third place right now. And really should be in the basement. With the way we played against the Giants. 
if anything, we should right now be in a position to draft the number one pick in the draft or trade out of it. Because there's no way we should have even built been, been in the game with the Falcons. And at this point, Jerry, thinking that technically we are playing for first place in the division. We are playing for first place in the division. At this point, do you have any confidence with the Eagles getting as healthy as they have been? I don't. Not if the team that was on the field yesterday against the Washington franchise is the one that's going to be playing in the game next weekend. A team that literally was worst team in so many categories that you made them look like the rebirth of the Hogs. That you scored three points, and that was only because special teams play by Tony Pollard getting you into position to at least kick a field goal, but still couldn't do anything with it. So, Jerry, when is the time to do something? I mean, Cowboys Nation, we want to see that there's some sign of life because this feels like we are literally rolling over and dying and that it's okay. Or are we looking at this season saying this is a redshirt season that because of COVID – We understand that we weren't going to be that good, that we have a lot of expiring contracts, and the worse we are, the better we'll be in a position to reload and possibly get rid of some of these contracts. Because we are so top-heavy with contracts that it's going to hamstring the future. And the fortunate thing that happened to the Cowboys, because we've been in this position before, was because you had Dak Prescott, your starting franchise quarterback, who was making under a million dollars a year for his first three years, you were able to get out from under Des Bryant's and Tony Romo's contracts and things like that to actually be able to get you on an even keel. But we're right back where we were before. I don't know what happened to D-Law since he got his contract, you'll see a flash here and there where you say, oh, D-Law's back, but it's not sustained. Jalen Smith, who two years ago looked like he was one of the best up-and-coming linebackers in football, yeah, he's the NFL leading tackler, but it's because our offense can't do anything with the football or used to score real quickly that the defense is literally on the field more than anybody else. Other teams are having more and more snaps, so of course you're going to have more tackles. And you look across the board, and right now, I don't know what area you say that, okay, we're, we're doing good in this area. Right now, all you look at to say is, we got a lot of great wide receivers. We ain't got anybody to get the ball right now, but we got great wide receivers. You have to wonder where Zeke is with the fumbling issues. I'm still wondering if, you know, maybe... He gets a pass because he did have COVID over the summer that maybe, you know, some of his capabilities was reduced while he's still recovering from that. Maybe you give some of a pass to the change in coaching that the players aren't buying in because they were Garrettites and he didn't have enough time to practice. I don't know, but Jerry, thus far, it seems like All this is acceptable. And seeing all this being acceptable, I'm still trying to understand how it was that we won back-to-back Super Bowls and that was not acceptable for the Dallas Cowboys that we needed to make change. Yet, here it is. This is the worst game that I can ever remember from the Dallas Cowboys that literally... The quarterback got knocked out, and nobody came to the defense. I don't know, but Jerry, this is bad. This is real bad. And we're waiting. 